And thanks for tuning in. We have a great show in store tonight. Two special guests on the show from Victoria, B.C., it's country group, The Tumbling Dice, and from Ontario, country artist Nicole Ray. Lots of stories and great music ahead. First up, it's my pleasure to welcome Ryan Evans from The Tumbling Dice. Hey, Ryan. Hi, Dave. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Great to have you here, and we'll give a big shout-out to Linda Ewing, who booked both guests for the show tonight, and uh, great person, great to, great helping you out there. Linda said, if I don't give her a shout-out, I'm in big trouble. So, uh, hi, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, we know she is listening, and it's great to have her listening and everyone else tonight. Man, we got some great things to talk about with you guys. First of all, you have your debut EP out, which is available at iTunes. Five great songs on it. What was it like for you guys to put together the songs and have this EP available for your fans? Um, yeah, I mean, the whole process of recording is uh, always so much fun. And uh, it we had, we were doing a big festival in Duncan, B.C. last year, and uh, there was going to be almost 8,000 people at it, so we decided to put a EP out and uh, just try our hand, our hand at uh, writing some songs. And, uh, yeah, it came together in a couple months, and I think it turned out okay. And we've had some good responses from it so far. And, I mean, we're I'm in the studio right now today recording some new songs. So uh, we'll see if we can uh, match that or do even better. So, nice. Yeah, no, it's been, yeah, well, it's been, the whole process has been fun. We'll talk about uh, the new songs you're working on in that. But as, as far as the whole process goes, when you're in the studio, whether it was this album or the ones you're working on today, you've got a producer, obviously, who's doing stuff. But do you guys as a group have ideas on how – the uh, sound on specific songs should come across? Yeah, we like to have a pretty good idea before we go into the studio um, what we want. I mean, there's there's nothing worse than sitting there and uh, watching the clock tick away and your your money <laughs> just going down the tubes. <laughs> yeah. So you need to go and prepare it. And we, like, just right down to the guitar tone to um, what we, exactly what we want. With these record, recordings, it was pretty easy. We want to keep it very simple, nothing too fancy. Just we want it to sound exactly how we sound on stage live. <clears throat> Minus all the screaming go, of course. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Exactly. I want to be able to hear the, hear the song on the album. Yeah, I was at uh, your show, as I mentioned before we came on the air, uh, during Canadian Music Week at, at the Cadillac Lounge. And you guys were terrific, really high-energy show. You did covers as well as originals. What was that experience like for you at uh, Cadillac Lounge and Canadian Music Week? Um, it was it was definitely an experience. Uh, it was kind of weird. It's it weird for us. We're not used to playing shows like that um, that are a little more, I don't know, a little tame. Um, so it, it's good for us. Don't get me wrong. It was really good for us. We really need to kind of focus on tightening things up and, and um, you know, being professional, I guess. But uh, most of our shows, <laughs> we do it here. It's just kind of crazy, and people are, like, you know, just going nuts kind of thing. So that's always fun, but it's, it's kind of good to have a reality check and, and kind of um, tighten your sound up and really, you know, kind of figure out what everyone is doing at each uh, specific uh, second. So it was good for us. We sure. got some great people and uh, got some new fans out of it. And, um, yeah, it's all it's all learning experience, so it's all good, yeah. It's got to be great to uh, perform in different provinces, um, you know, different places across Canada, just to, to, as you said, introduce yourself to new people and, and make new fans. That's got to be pretty rewarding. Yeah, it's our first time playing uh, as a country as, as a country band in uh, in Toronto, and the country is not really huge back uh, uh, back in Toronto. Like it's said, in the West Coast, like if I meet someone in the West Coast and like I'm playing a country band, they're like, "Oh, awesome!" Um, we definitely felt like we had to convert some people to the countryside when we played because we did another show aside from Canadian Music Week, and uh, people were like, "Oh, you guys are a country band?" I'm like, "Yeah, just check it out. Don't don't judge us. Yeah, just check it out." And, That's uh, right. 
you know, we think you'll like it. So uh, the country wave, I don't think it's hit as big uh, in Toronto as it is at West, but uh, hopefully we can uh, change that. Well, yeah, it is interesting as far as what uh, people's stereotypes are, and this has been around forever about country music. When you mention it, if they don't know anything about it and you say you're a country music band or a fan, they assume it's, you know, something very traditional and very old and very stereotypical. Yeah. But then they see a band like you guys and realize it's not what they thought it was, and they end up loving it. Yeah, I mean, basically, how I, someone who's never seen us before, we're a rock band that plays country songs. Like, you know, we play country songs, but if you see us live, we're definitely going to rock it. And uh, we're high energy. And, you know, I do like bands that are, like, not high energy and, like, kind of play slower stuff. I like that stuff. But uh, for our band, no, we bring it every time we play. We we try and uh, rock it as much as possible. Now, do you guys ever slow it down? I know on the album it's all up-tempo. Pretty much the last song is a little bit slower. But do you guys ever take the energy down to, to put a heartbreaking ballad or a love song in the show? It depends on the show. Like um, anything over a couple hundred people, maybe one slow song, maybe two slow songs in the set. But uh, that's at the very most. Uh, if it's you know if, if we were playing for a lot of people, I like to keep it high energy. And uh, generally, the the shows we do are, are there's a a big buzz around them kind of thing, like uh, not just us. I mean, like if it's like an event, um, like, and it's a high energy, people having a good time and we want to keep that good time going. Uh, a ballad is, I, I love a good ballad, but like, you know, one, maybe two tops kind of thing. And then get right back to the party. So definitely. I mean, that's, that's obviously the atmosphere you guys are creating. Uh, we'll, we'll get to, we'll talk about uh, the country gone country live nights uh, in a little bit. I want to get to that, but how long have you guys mm-hmm. been together and, and, Tell me about the other members uh, in the band who aren't on the show with us, uh, a little bit about them and, uh, you know, again, how long you guys have been a band. Okay, yeah, we've been a band for about three and a half years, I think, right now. So Jamie Troy on the drums, Lee Griswold on the bass, and uh, Andrew Lang on the guitar. Um, we kind of put this band together just to play some covers and have some fun. And for the Gone Country, those big Gone Country events, uh, if you go on our Facebook page, you can see those crazy events and uh, we, we just put a band together just to have some fun. Uh, we've all, we've all been in bands for most of our lives and, you know, tried to make it here and with this and then we're like, okay, let's just have some fun. Let's just put a band together, play some fun songs and have a good time. And, and it kind of evolved into, yeah, we're having such a good time. We're getting huge crowds out and, uh, you know, why don't we, let's put out our own songs and see how they go over. And, that's kind of how the EP evolved, but this band was just put together just to have fun, and, and we still do have fun. It's it's all about having a good time and and not trying to be so hard on ourselves or or what do people what do people want to hear from us or what do they want to see? Like let's just let's just be ourselves yeah. and, and have fun. I think you end up second guessing yourself too much and overthinking it if you're trying to think of what the fans want. And I think if it comes from you as a group, the truest place inside you that you know people are going to uh, people are going to embrace that. Yeah, no, they gravitate towards people just want you to be real and I've definitely been guilty in the past. It's like, okay, what do people want to hear? Like what should we what should we wear? What should we dress like? It's like and it's not fun. It's, you know, you don't want to go through life second guessing yourself. It's yeah. a horrible way to do things. But uh, in the music industry you, you you tend to do that because everyone's an expert, right? And everyone's like, Oh, you gotta do this and and you start believing this after a while and you're like you get to a point in your life you're like, Wait a minute, this isn't even fun anymore. So uh <laughs> Yeah, we've come back to just being regular people on stage, <laughs> and it's it's kind of working for us. So. It sounds like it. Now, do you all come from uh, different uh, backgrounds musically, different influences? Uh, are you, you some things in common, some things very different in, in what you like in music? Uh, I think, like, the uh, rhythm section, like, Lee and Jamie, they used to play in some alt-country bands and some, some indie bands that toured Canada and... Uh, you know, did pretty well. Like they played with Leroy Stagger, Phil Hamm, but he's uh, they they did they played some like some big shows. But I'd say kind of different um, different music than what Andrew and I uh, come from. Like we're rockers. Like Andrew and I, the guitar player, and I were we're kind of more the rock and roll side. Um, you know, we we played in a hard rock band together, and we're like we love seventies rock and just like ACDC and all that stuff. So. It, it, there's definitely a balance. We're not all from the same uh, neck of the woods, musically speaking. Sure. But it's, uh, now, speaking it's, of, it's kind of speak, nice to have that. Yeah. 
Good to have a mixture, right? Mm. No, definitely. You're talking about 70s rock and roll now. I'm looking at your name, The Tumbling Dice. There's a Rolling Stone song called Tumbling Dice. Is there a connection there, or what's the story behind oh, the for, band's name? Yeah, for sure. It's actually Andrew, uh, my guitar player. He he came up with the name. Uh, he could tell the story way better than I can, but the Rolling <laughs> Stones were named after... Oh, I'm totally going to mess this story up. The Rolling Stones, they got their name from a Muddy Waters song, which uh, Pop was a Rolling Stone or something like that, I can't remember. But sure. so we decided to do the same thing because we, him and I are huge Stones fans, so we're like, let's do the same thing. Let's pick our, our favorite Rolling Stone song, but ch- kind of right. change it, make it a little bit country, take the G off the tumbling, and so that's <laughs> kind of where we got that. And you know what? I'll give him full credit for that. He came up with that. And uh, you know what? A lot, of, a lot of our fans don't get the connection, which is kind of cool. So yeah. uh, it, and for us, it's like we still listen to that song, Someone Dice, and it is by, it's by far our favorite Stone song. And, uh, Isn't it? Uh, That's so awesome. It's kind of cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. band names, I mean, nobody necessarily stops to think about it, but they're harder than you think to come up with unless it's named oh, after somebody. Of course, terrible. that's the easiest, but... It's it's you know you get used to it after a while, but when you hear a name like when I when I heard Lady Annabellum the very first time, it's like well that's like a weird name, but every name grows on you after a while. It's definitely a weird band name. I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm used to that yet. <laughs> the lady, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah, no, I hate picking out band names. I hate it. It's uh, so I, thankfully <laughs> I didn't have to do it in this band. Uh, I played in some uh, some bands with some horrible band names before, so. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm speaking with Ryan Evans from the Tumbling Dice, a country group from Victoria, B.C. Their website is thetumblindice.ca, without the G in Tumbling. And you can also head to iTunes. Their EP is there. Ryan, we'll turn to a song now uh, called This Old House, which is on the EP. Well, what can you tell us about the uh, inspiration behind the song? Well, this song is the first country song I've ever written. And um, oddly enough, it came... Uh, it came together and like it's one of those songs that came together in about two minutes and that never happens for me it's like it's out of two minutes or six months so um <laughs> uh, i was uh the song is about my grandma's house i was she was in the hospital not doing very good and we were staying at her house and um my folks were talking about selling the house and what to do with the house and you know because uh making arrangements like that and i was like just kind of thinking like it's, you know it's not a very not a very nice house, I guess, if you just look at it, but um, I'd spend my whole life there every summer, every Christmas, uh, every Thanksgiving at this house, and so many memories, and and I was just picturing someone else coming in and being like, oh, I, this house is not that great, but to me, it is like the best house I've ever been to, you know, it's all, it's the only thing I remember growing up, and, uh, you know, it was a very emotional time for me, because we were losing my grandma, and uh, but so the song, just, it comes from, like, such i think that's why it works it just comes from such a genuine place um and it it was written very very quickly uh, which yeah that never happens to me at least so um well i guess that's, that's a sign the that the story song, to me it, it's ahead, a sign though. that the song came from a very truthful place and it just flowed out you didn't have to really stop and think about it it, it was just there yeah i mean yeah for sure um the emotion was definitely there i kind of took it i kind of put like a little uh uh, love story, I don't know if you call it love story, but some sort of relationship uh, thing in there just to kind of make it interesting. Uh, sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, that song for me reminds me of, like, that, my grandma's house and, like, kind of growing up in a small town and, like, you know, your property, when you live in a small town, your property is everything. It's just like, you know, um, it's your, kind of your whole world, especially if you're living out in the middle of nowhere. So uh, it means a lot more to you than it does to uh, someone just passing by on the highway. So true. Let's hear the song now. This is from the Tumbling Dice called This Old House on In the Country. Drive out to the fields from nine to five. Man, I ain't rich, but I get by.
And that is the Tumbling Dice with This Old House. You'll find that on their debut EP, which is available at iTunes, and their website is thetumblingdice.ca. A lot of great energy there, and, man, the guitar work is awesome. Yeah, that's all uh, Andrew uh, on the slide guitar. It's, uh, he's pretty awesome on the slide. You don't see a lot of people play slide guitar because it's, it's pretty difficult, but, uh, yeah, he rocks it for sure. It sounds great. Well, Ryan, let's talk about those Gone Country Live Nights. Uh, I know these are so popular. I've seen online people commenting on them. Uh, tell me exactly what happens and what kind of music you guys are doing there. Uh, so we've been doing that Gone Country for, I think, well, three and a half years, basically, since uh, we started the band for these nights. And uh, the doors open at uh, 8.30 or 9 o'clock, and there's already a lineup of, like, 200 people. And uh, they just packed the upstairs cabaret uh, in Victoria, right on Wharf Street, and uh, and we just go crazy. There's another band that opens up for us called Bucko and Toad, and uh, they're a country band as well. And and then we come on at about 11 o'clock and uh, play right till about two. And uh, wow. there's PBR raps there and Jack Daniels, so we're giving out. I I must get out like two or three cases of beer per. <laughs> Per night, and uh, Jack Daniels girls come giving out shots, and uh, it's it's complete complete mayhem. I would say to people like, picture the craziest night out you've ever had, and we'll beat that hand down. Like <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's just so crazy. So That's actually, awesome. uh, the night has gotten so crazy that we've uh, stopped them, and there's a bar opening up now. The demand is that big for for this night that there's going to be a bar called the Duke Saloon opening up in Victoria oh, wow. in August. So we're going to be, it's going to be Gone Country every Friday night with the Tumble and Dice and uh, every Saturday night with Bucko and Toad. So that's, that's pretty where, amazing. Uh, that's where we're at right now. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, talk about success. That's great. Well, what are some of the cover songs you guys do in your shows? I know when you were in town, you did uh, Cadillac Ranch, which, of course, Cadillac Lounge. That's very fitting, a song from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, which is a cool song, man. That, just, that one just rocks. What are some of the other uh, songs you do in your shows? We, uh, geez, yeah, where do I even start? Uh, I'll just start dropping some names. We do Jake Owen, Tim McGraw. Um, we do some, we'll do some Alan Jackson or some nitty gritty, some old stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, 
we'll do a Florida Georgia line. We we've had to do a bunch of for, Florida Georgia line because people just uh, lose their minds when when those songs come on. So oh yeah, so popular. Um, yeah, um, geez, I'm, <laughs> there's so many songs. <laughs> um, yeah, basically anything new country. Uh, Justin Moore, Kip Moore. Yep. Um, anything new country that's uh, that's a hit right now. Uh, we're, we'll, we'll play it. We'll learn it. We'll play it. So we love playing. The learning. Does, we love learning these songs and we love yeah. playing them. How long does it take you, Ryan, to learn a new song? Um. Well, I mean, every. I mean, Jamie, our drummer, he can learn it in probably about five minutes. He's pretty quick, but uh, <laughs> it's it's pretty hard. Like I'd, I'd say, like uh, um, you know, learning how to sing the song is like the most important thing. So it does take. It takes some time just to get You want to sing it exactly right, and you want to have every word right, because these country fans know every single word to every song. <laughs> and if you mess it up, they're not happy, because <laughs> it's their favorite song. You know, every song you sing is someone's favorite song. So you need, right. to, you need to be on point. And uh, so there is, a, there is a fair amount of work. And these songs sound really simple. These country songs sound really simple. And I've heard music, other musicians be like, oh, easy, just play some country songs. No, they're like pretty intricate and they're very they're they're pretty complicated stuff. I mean, you're getting Nashville has the best musicians in the world playing these songs. All right, mm-hmm. and we're just trying to keep our head above water playing these songs. So yeah, they're pretty tough. They're a lot tougher than they sound, that's for sure. Now you guys have had a chance to uh, open up and share the stage with some acts. A couple of them are Aaron Prechette, of course, a huge country star in Canada. Brett Kissel, who's come on the scene in the last couple of years, although he's been at it longer than that. He's still a young guy, but now the last couple of years he just exploded on the scene. What is it like when you get a chance to uh, to open up and and hang out with these guys? Um, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's Aaron Prechette. When we played, we opened up for him last year in Victoria, and. Uh, you know he's a he's a big deal. He's a big deal, and uh, so it was kind of intimidating a little bit uh, until until you get on stage and you, you know you settle in. But uh, we, you you learn a lot from these guys. Like uh, Aaron's been at it for a long time, and he's the show he puts on is is pretty impressive. And he you know he's like an hour and a half of solid go go go. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's exciting for us, and it's. Uh, you know, chance to meet these guys. We, there's not a lot of hanging out. Like, um, kind of, we do uh, we do these shows with other bands too, and people think like, oh, you must party all night. No, it's not like that at all. It's all, it's a lot of. Uh, you might have a quick shot or something like that, but it's all business. And usually they're on to the next town too, and uh, you know we got our own stuff going on too. So, uh, um, yeah, we're doing a, a huge festival with a ton of awesome country artists. Dean Brody, Aaron Prochet's gonna be back, and. Tim McGraw, Jake Owen, and there's not a lot of kind of hanging out with other artists. It's just everyone's like so busy, and there's there's a lot going on. It's you can't just party all the time, or else you won't get sure. anything done, or and you won't be <laughs> you won't be good at what you do. So, yeah, yeah, just sure. a quick little uh, quick little chat uh, is is all that's needed, really. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's just nice to see them play. Me always learning from these guys. Yo, I bet. Now, uh, is there anybody from the country music world, Canada, the States, that for you, Ryan, would be a personal thrill to meet one day? Yeah, um, yeah. I think the, I think the first big country show I saw was Eric Church uh, two years ago in uh, in Seattle. So I think meeting him, like he just like he blew my mind, and he. This this has been a while. This is before I wrote this old house, and he kind of got me inspired to like get in the country scene fully, put both feet in, start writing some songs, and I think uh, I would like to meet him for sure. Uh, nice. Yeah, he'd be he'd definitely be up there. He's got some cool tunes. I like a lot of his, including Springsteen and his very latest "Give Me Back My Hometown." Great songs. Oh yeah, no, he's he's a really good songwriter and. Uh, he just seems like a kind of down to earth guy. He's not about the party, and I know he sings a lot about Jack Daniels, but he's a, you know he's a he's a family man, and uh, yeah. you know yeah, I like his style. Basically, I like <laughs> I like his style. Nice. Well, let's turn to another song from your EP. Again, it's available at iTunes, self-titled debut EP from the Tumbling Dice. This one's called Whiskey on the Fire. And before we talk about it, I understand that uh, this, this old house plus Whiskey on the Fire, they're going to be part of some kind of movie or or, or snowmobiling video? 
Yeah, it's actually, uh, I know it sounds kind of weird, but it's uh, like extreme snowmobiling. Uh, it's called Thunderstruck Films, and this is volume 13, I think we're going to be on. So it comes out August 15th, and it's a pretty huge deal. Like, they have, like, millions of fans, and they they sell a ton of these DVDs. And I wasn't, they, they I got a call from Helena, Montana a couple of weeks ago, and they said, oh, we'd like to put your songs in. Um and uh, I was like, what What kind of stuff is this? And I YouTubed it. I was blown away how crazy these guys are. They're going up the biggest mountains you've ever seen and, like, flying off their snowmobiles. And they're, they're basically insane. But uh, I was like, yes, I like this. <laughs> this sounds awesome. So, yeah, we're going to have a couple songs uh, on that when it comes out in August. So uh, that'll be cool. That is really cool. And that, that, uh, the video is, like, available in stores to purchase or online? It's available online, yeah. Uh, thunderstruckfilms.com, and or you can just YouTube Thunderstruck Films, and you'll see all these snowmobiling um, trailers come up. And uh, yeah, their movies are amazing. I didn't think I'd be into extreme snowmobiling, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely a fan. <laughs> I'll have to check that out afterwards. That's great. So let's turn to the song "Whiskey on the Fire," which will be in that video you just mentioned. And tell tell us a bit about the song before we share it, Ryan. Yeah. Well. Um, what I was saying about this old house is that song came out in about two minutes. And this is the opposite of that song. This song took me forever to write, even though it's a pretty simple song. There's not much to it. But uh, I want to write a uh, a nostalgic song. I like, I love nostalgic songs. I just, you know, it's just such a big part of everyday life. I just, every, you always look back on fond memories of, you know, your 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 friends and stuff like that and uh i wanted to write uh kind of a love song of like the one that got away right. and um so yeah and just like good memories and it's not just about the girl but uh you know when you think about like an ex um uh, a girlfriend or something like that you you people tend to just think unless they're crazy and they think about like the best times <laughs> that they had with them you know what i mean like oh, for and sure. you forget about all the bad stuff and all the all the drama so uh, i kind of wanted to capture that and uh and uh whiskey on the fire just sounds cool so nice yeah it's, yeah it's a great title too let's hear it now the tumbling dice and whiskey on the fire on in the country i 
And that is a great song from the Tumbling Dice called Whiskey on the Fire here on In the Country. They are a country band from Victoria, B.C. Their website is thetumblingdice.ca. And again, their debut EP is available at iTunes now. Ryan, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you uh, to hear all about the band and to, to hear those great stories. Thank Yeah, Dave. Thank you so much for uh, having me on. And uh, another shout-out to Linda for hooking this uh, interview up. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Definitely. Definitely. Well, it's been my pleasure. Linda, thank you so much once again. And Ryan, uh, all the best. Love your music, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks so much. Take care.